So right now I run my own startup, running a SaaS platform, which I, I founded and I'm building by myself. So I'm a solo founder. Uh, my background started out as a consultant in, the, in IBM, in the IT space, and I moved into ANZ Bank, into the data strategy area and then product. And then from there, I got the itch to start my own company. So I left to build my own startup. When I was working in product, I think I had a big interest in, in the tech side of things and sort of getting more involved into the strategy of the product itself, monetization and building it and everything. Um, so for me, I like to do everything in that way. So I decided the best way to do it is to just teach myself code. I, initially, I thought I would just learn enough to build a prototype and then I could get some funding, at least from an angel investor, to keep building it or get someone else to build it. Um, I kind of fell in love with the process. I was really enjoying creating, working for myself, sort of seeing tangible changes when you build something and then you send it out there and people start using it and emailing you, thanking you for what you've built. You know, it's a very addictive kind of feeling. So I just kept going and going and going. Um, so I've kind of gotten to the point where I, I do all the tech and the marketing and the, the branding and the products myself, which is great, but it's also not very scalable. So where I'm at. <laughs> The best one sticks out to me quite obviously is when I first started out as a graduate, um, I had a, my people manager was an old project manager who was sort of stuck in these old ways. And I was trying to get into data and analytics and it, like a bit more like trending new technologies. And he said, if you don't learn Java, you're not going to be successful in your career. So you should go and learn Java. This is when I was, a business analyst in the data analytics area trying to get into product. And he basically told me to learn a programming language that no one uses in data analytics. Um, and I actually, I was so offended and upset by that, that advice from my, my career coach that I told IBM that I wanted to move on to someone else. And that was just, if he was judging me based on that, that was not where I wanted to be. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the worst piece of advice. The best piece of advice I received, I think when I was going to start my own startup, I was a bit afraid and I was saying, well, I haven't done it before. I don't know how to build it. Why am I quitting? Um, I had a mentor at that stage who was a former CTO and he basically just said, just do it. Because like you're just sitting around thinking about doing it. You're not going to have anything to regret. If the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to learn two new programming languages, you're going to learn how to start a business. You might fail, but you have done 300 different things that you would have never learned in your job anyway, and you're going to enjoy it. So I think just the confidence of saying, just do it. Like, I know it's going to be hard and you might fail. You probably will. That's how startups work, but you're not going to regret it anyway. So that's it. Uh, I think going back to taking risks, I, I think I was just, I, I grew up in Canberra. Uh, it's very public service-y, long-term um, career, kind of very secure stable situations for everybody I would I would have really liked someone to just say just screw around start some businesses try some different things like don't worry about getting a salary and a promotion every year just like find out where you want to be in 20 years and build for that build the skills and the, and the networks for it rather than just focusing on your next paycheck and your next promotion and that next level up just sort of like a weird artificial way to feel like you're progressing but you're not actually getting anywhere very hard to tell. I wouldn't say any of them are mistakes because I'm happy where I am. Um, if I was to say I would do one thing differently, it would probably be not leave consulting so early. So I sort of, in saying that, yeah, I, I was doing okay in consulting. I was enjoying it with the projects were a bit slow. So I wanted to do something else. Um, I jumped across to a bank, but I think despite the, you know, the increase in role title and salary, it was a slower environment. So I think I gave up a lot of learning and variety. Like in consulting, at least, you can do three or four different projects a year. When you move to industry, it was just one project for the whole year. So I think my learning slowed down quite a lot because of that. So I had to pick up and do some more self-directed learning. So if I was to do that again, I would probably stay in consulting or find something else that was that had a bit more variety and it was a bit challenging rather than saying, oh, I can be a manager if I jump across now and I can get a 30% pay rise. That was not worth it in the long term. One thing that I try and enforce and tell people is that focus on the skills and capabilities rather than 
the job itself. So a lot of people will say, oh, I want to be a designer. So I will need to apply for designer jobs and I need to meet some designers and I need to go and talk to everybody. But then you say, okay, so what design books have you read? What do you know? Like, do you know how to use Figma? Do you understand Sketch? Do you? So it's like you think of the toolkit that you need to be a really good designer. Go about it that way. Yes, you have to meet people and yes, you have to understand the networks. But if you want to be a really good designer, start with the basics and build that foundation. And then it's easy to have the conversations as well.